What's up you guys? Hey, it's John with Vision 360 Fire Financials. Hey, today we're going to cover some of the advantages of having real estate and some of the tax incentives that the government, and this probably includes everywhere around the entire world, no matter where you go, it is advantageous if you're a real estate investor. So stay tuned. All right, let me show you. So when you own real estate, you have multiple tax benefits, but I'm going to just show you guys one thing. So, 27 and a half in 40 years, right? So 27 and a half years is how much, how many years you can depreciate a residential property over the course of its life. So to give you an example of how this would work is let's say you have a residential property and it is worth $275,000. That's easy math. I like that a lot. You would take that and divide it over 27 and a half years. So take your years, whatever you pay, right? Divided by the years. So this would be the same if I put if I paid 400,000, 400,000 would be up there. It's just easier for me for math here. So this would amount to about which I'm not a math wizard, but it would amount to about $10,000 a year. So about $10,000 a year you could depreciate on this property. Now that's key because you can write off that against any potential income that you make on that property. So let's say you make off of a 275k home, let's say you make, well, let's just throw a number out there, an easy number, right? Let's say you make 2000 a month, right? So just for an example, so you make $2,000 a month, that's going to be $24,000 a year, right? So you would take the $24,000 and then automatically this ten k would get subtracted against it and you would actually only show $14,000 in income. And then you can also take your, um, if you have a property manager, if you have any expenses, repairs, tax write-offs, your expense for your CPA, if you have a lawyer to draft you a policy, all of those are expense against that 24000 So by the time you're done with it, if you include this, you could be negative. And I want to show you guys something else. But before I do that, same thing would apply on 40 years. So 40 years, 40 years applies to a commercial property. So this here is a commercial. This here is a residential and this is for the United States what the government allows to be able to deduct so it's over 27 and a half years for a residential and you can do it over 40 years for a commercial so if you do the math on that over 40 years uh, I'm just gonna speed things up I'm gonna but that would be two and a half right so you'd be able to divide it over 40 years so it's two and a half equal to two and a half percent of price paid over that. So to give you an example, let's say another easy example, let's say you paid 400K for this commercial property, right? So 400,000, right? You would just take that and divide it. You could do divide it by 2.5 or you could do divide it by 40, one or the other. But I'm going to tell you right now, either way, it's going to get you the same answer, and that's just going to be $10,000. So both of these ended up being the same example. Didn't even try to purposely pick that, but that's what they ended up being. So you could depreciate that over $10,000. Now, mind you, this property, all of these properties, it's not like they're going down in value. It's just on paper, you're able to depreciate against it because the government factors in expenses you'll have with it, repairs, et cetera, et cetera, right? And this doesn't have to be a new property to do all this. I'm just letting you guys know that. You can buy it and it could be a used property built in 1980 and you'll still get all of these benefits. You need to have a good tax CPA so that way you can write all that off and make that happen. Now, let me show you something else before we go here. And that is another good write-off that you should definitely take. All right, we're back. So the next write-off you should take is against your living. Living slash 
we'll call this furniture. So household goods slash furniture, guys. So you can typically take this and depreciate it, right? So you can usually depreciate it. I know that's spelled wrong. There's only one P, but you get the idea. Depreciate it over seven years. So example of this, let's say you do a remodel on a home. You upgrade all new washers, dryers, appliances, everything, and you supply that for your rental property or your Airbnb, Verb, VRBO, whatever it is, you can take it. And oftentimes you can depreciate it and drag that depreciation over seven years. So let's say you do a $70,000 renovation. You go all out and you really want to do a really good reno, right? So you'd be able to depreciate that 70 K over seven years which would be $10,000. So at $10,000, you know, that is a good sizable amount. So $10,000 and we take our previous example on our residential and we add in the 10K and just depreciation the government also allows us, we're sitting at $20,000 just right there. And that doesn't include the five to 10% that you pay at property management company as well. So by the time it's all said and done, that $24,000 guys, just in this example, not including all the lawyer, tax, uh, tax CPA that you can write off, all those other expenses, you're only sitting at $4,000 on paper and profit on this property, even if you made 24,000. Because you have to figure, this right here was not an actual loss technically that you lost, and the furniture, hopefully you made some money on that. So you really only paid out that 10K and you're getting a 4K uh, that you would end up paying tax on, but you wouldn't have to because I'm sure your depreciation would be above and beyond that. Which then if it's negative, I'm gonna do another video, you can carry that over to other properties. And that's when it looks really exciting because that's when you can uh, basically be an entrepreneur and that's when you can pay 0% tax legally as an entrepreneur. So very neat guys. Highly recommend you guys check that out. It's uh, pretty amazing really, especially when you get into the tax code. It actually has a lot to do with benefiting investors and entrepreneurs. And if you're either one of those, there's always going to be tax benefits. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below. Also hit that like button. Also share this with all your friends and colleagues, and I'll see you next time. You tell me how it is.